Hi guys, uh, today we'll be solving a compass error question using uh, the azimuth method and uh, for a celestial body we'll take star as an example because my last video on the compass error method using azimuth um, used the sun as a celestial body so I thought this time I'll focus on a star as a celestial body and I'll give you the link to my previous video on this method as well so that you can make a comparison on what's the difference is basically the same except that some corrections differ with a star all right so let's get into the question here the question says it's 21st of september 1992 and it's pm at ship uh, pm means it's evening time on the ship or night time on the ship and the dead reckoning and estimated position or estimated position or dr position is given to you and the star's name is canopus uh, which had a compass bearing of 150 degrees all right so the c here stands for compass now chronometer time is given to you and uh, the uh, chronometer error is given to you as slow 2 minutes 12 seconds slow and the variation is given to you as 3 degrees east and what you have to find is basically the deviation of compass so this is a normal exercise that we do on the ships uh, on a daily basis uh, every watch you are supposed to be calculating the compass error and the deviation and noting it down in the compass error logbook Right, that helps us to make a comparison from the deviation we are getting for a heading to the deviation that is uh, written on the deviation card next to the steering compass all right let's get into it so for solution uh, before we start with the solution we have to solve the ambiguity of the chronometer time that means that uh, if the chronometer time given to us is 7 hours 28 minutes and 52 seconds it could be 7 in the evening or 7 in the morning so we don't know which is the correct one so to solve the ambiguity i will add 12 hours to this and i will write down another scenario that is possible with the chronometer so one option is 7 hours 28 minutes 52 seconds and the other option is 19 hours 28 minutes and 52 seconds right then you apply the chronometer error in both the cases similarly so error is slow in this case so you will add the error that means the chronometer is lagging behind it needs to catch up it's slow so you will add the error if it was fast you would have subtracted the error once you add the error in both the cases you get a gmt time now we don't know which is the correct gmt time so to find out the correct gmt time we have to apply a correction called the zone correction the zone here this zone is obtained by through the lit or the longitude in time longitude in time is obtained by dividing the longitude in this case the dr longitude or the dead reckoning longitude divided by 50 which is 140 degrees 11 minutes divided by 15 you get 9 hours 20 minutes and 44 seconds now this is the lit lit is written in hours minutes and seconds but zone is a more practical way of timekeeping because longitude in time is based on the fact that every sh uh, ship with an individual longitude will have an individual time and that is not a practical way of timekeeping you can't do business in ports every ship needs to have the same time when they're in the port so the world is divided into zones uh, between a range of longitude now, I've made videos on this before just uh, giving you a quick summary so once you get your LIT you can get a zone from it depending on the LIT so in this case the LIT is 9 hours 20 minutes 44 seconds so I will round it off to a round number of 9 hours all right because the minutes here is less than 30 minutes is 20 minutes so we need a round number a whole number for this zone we cannot work with minutes and seconds for this zone right? so this basically means that this is the zone of time every ship will keep in that particular area now uh, if it's west longitude zone is in west longitude that means you are in west longitude uh, so that means the time on your ship uh, which is the zone time or zt or ship's mean time or smt uh, you will be behind gmt gmt will be ahead of you so the time at gmt will be more than the time on your ship right so that's why uh, you will subtract it so you are in west longitude and so you will subtract the zone to get the ship's mean time in both the cases you do that you subtract 9 hours in one case you get 223104 and the other case you get 103104 now how do i know which is the correct smt or the correct zone time on my ship so the hint given to me is that it's pm on my ship in the question that means it's evening or it's night on my ship and it's the first case i can see the zone time or the ship's mean time it's night here 223104 is night 
टेन थर्टी वन जीरो फोर इज मॉर्निंग सो आई विल कैंसल आउट द सेकेंड केस आई डोंट नीड द सेकेंड केस एंड इफ इट्स नाइट ऑन माई शेप एंड इट्स ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट ऑफ सेप्टेम्बर आई विल राइट ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट ईयर बट जी एम टी आई कैन सी दे आर नाइन आवर्स अहेड ऑफ मी जी एम टी इज नाइन आवर्स अहेड ऑफ मी एंड आई कैन सी इट्स मॉर्निंग सेवन थर्टी वन देयर सो दैट मीन्स जी एम टी इज ऑलरेडी गॉन टू द नेक्स्ट डे विच इज़ ट्वेंटी सेकेंड ऑफ सेप्टेम्बर आई एम स्टिल ऑन ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट ऑफ सेप्टेम्बर ऑन माई शिप बिकॉज आई एम इन वेस्ट लॉन्ग एजूड आई एम नाइन आवर्स अवे फ्रॉम जी एम टी बट जी एम टी इज ऑलरेडी नाइन आवर्स अहेड ऑफ मी दे हैव ऑलरेडी गॉन ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट डे एंड इज मॉर्निंग सेवन ओ क्लॉक देर सो दैट्स द जी एम टी आई विल बी यूजिंग फॉर द रेस्ट ऑफ द क्वेश्चन सो आई विल राइट डाउन माई जी एम टी हेयर सेपरेटली इज ट्वेंटी सेकेंड ऑफ सेप्टेम्बर सेवन आवर्स थर्टी वन मिनट्स एंड फोर सेकेंड्स सॉरी और राइट नो वाई हैव रिटर्न इट सेपरेटली इज बिकॉज मेनी टाइम स्टूडेंट्स गेट एक्साइटेड एंड वॉट दे डू इज दे वर्क आउट द क्वेश्चन विद द जोन टाइम विच इज़ इन करेक्ट यू हैव टू वर्क आउट द क्वेश्चन विद द जी एम टी टाइम दैट्स द टाइम यूज इन द नॉटिकलाल मन एप टू गेट द वैल्यूज ऑफ द जी एच ए एंड द रेस्ट then i'll go into the 1992 almanac for 22nd of september and i will find out my gha aries for 7 hours all right so i'll go into the nautical almanac for 22nd of september all right and i, I, I had marked it out all for you but i want to show it again to you guys so 22nd of september is here this is 1992 nautical almanac this is 22nd of september these times are gmt times right this says gmt here And I need to find one out for Aries. So all the stars GH is obtained from Aries. So for seven hours it should be one zero six twenty three point seven. Right. I'll go back to the calculation. It shows one zero six twenty three point seven. Then I will go into the increments page for thirty one minutes and four seconds. Increments are always added, so I will add the increment. But where do I get the increment from? I have to go into the increments page into back into the nautical almanac for thirty one minutes and four seconds. So I go back into the nautical almanac for thirty one minutes and four seconds. My thirty one minutes will be somewhere here. And you can see that I've already marked it out for you. So thirty one minutes is here, four seconds is here, and uh, Aries is here. And my increment seven degrees forty seven point three minutes. All right. So I go back, take this value, and I put it here. Increments are always added. I will add the increment. I get my G H A is for seven hours and thirty one minutes and four seconds. This is a G H A corrected. Then I apply my longitude. If my longitude is west, my G H A is best. That means my G H A should be more than my resulting L H A after applying longitude. All right. So the correction is that longitude west. The rule of thumb, G H A should be the best in comparison to L H A. So G H A should be more than L H A. But here G H A is already less than longitude. So how do you make it more than L H A? Just add 360 degrees here. You add 360 degrees. Don't subtract 140 minus 114. All right. Longitude west means you have to subtract from G H A, but G H A should be more. So just add 360 here and then subtract it. Don't subtract 140 degrees minus 114 degrees and get 26 degrees. That's incorrect. G H A has to be more for you to subtract the longitude from. So you just add 360 to L H A, G H A. Sorry, and that you subtract 120. You get L H A Aries. To this L H A Aries, you will add the S H A. S H A is always added. S H A of the star. The star's name is Canopus, given to you in the question. So where do you find the S H A from? You go back into the nautical almanac. Okay. Go back to the date of twenty second of September. Here it is, for the S H A star. Stars are given here. Canopus is here. You can find out the S H A as well as declination. Declination is written next to the S H A. S H A is two six four three point one, and declination is fifty two degrees forty one point two minutes. You wrote down both the information at the same time. It saves you some time. Come back and write down your S H A here. S H A is always added. I have told you that. Once you add it, the total value goes to more than three sixty. So it becomes somewhere around. Uh, f uh, if I can add it correctly, five nine eight degrees three point one right. But it cannot be more than three sixty. So you will subtract it from three sixty degrees. And then you get this answer two three eight degrees three point one. This is your L H A. Your L H A here will be named East. Because when L H is L H A, when it is between zero to one eighty, it is named west. If it is more than one eighty to three sixty, L H A is named east. In this case, it is more than one eighty, so it will be named east. 
all right i will erase some of this so that this doesn't look very cluttered you understood and you can watch this video again but uh, just to make it less uh, cluttered i've just erased some of the stuff here all right then you write down your declination that you got from the nautical almanac and the dr latitude given to you from the question itself then to calculate your compass error first you have to calculate the components of a so a is tan lat divided by tan lha so tan of latitude divided by tan of lha you get a value of 0.59 if you get a negative sign in the calculator ignore the negative sign all right when it comes to a and b you ignore negative signs and i have named it south why uh, well a is named opposite to latitude so if latitude is north you will name it south if latitude is south you will name it north but you, this is only unless lh is between 90 and 270 so a is named opposite to latitude unless lh is between 90 and 270 now in this case your lh is between 90 and 270 it's 238 so you will not name it opposite to latitude you will name it same as latitude and that's why because latitude is south i have named it south all right read this carefully again and you will understand it then you have to calculate b b is calculated by dividing tan declination by sine of lha put in the values if you get a negative sign ignore the negative sign in the calculator simply put the value you get you will get 1.55 now i have stuck to two decimal places you can go more if you want the more the number of decimal places the more accurate it is uh, some books they use two there some books they use five doesn't matter i use two two is okay in this case otherwise the more you use the more accurate it is anyway and now i have named it south i have named b south why because it is named same as declination your declination was south so i have named it south got it then write down your a and b values separately here the rule is if a and b are same names such as if both of them are south you will add them if they were both of them were north you would add them but if one is north and the other is south you would subtract them in this case both are south you add the two and you name it south because both a and b is south so you get c as 2.14 south all right taking that you move on to calculating your tan of azimuth now this stands for azimuth i often put down the acronyms but i kind of forget to explain it to you so this is tan of azimuth equals 1 divided by c times cos of lat put the value of c put the value of cos of lat here solve the denominator first and then divide one by it you should be getting 0 0.64208 take tan to the other side here gives you a tan inverse of 0 0.64208 and you should be getting 32.7 now because we are working with bearings i will round it off to the next whole number as 33 degrees now many books they carry on with decimal that's fine as well if you're a lecturer or in the exam you carry on with decimal that should be fine as well I only do this because it's for practical purposes when we talk about bearings we need whole numbers round numbers that we can plot on the chart or plot on the sheet right that's why I do that so if it's because it's 32.7 very close to 33 I've made it 33 but then I've named it south 33 east where did I get this from south comes from C whatever is C you will name it south name of C so if C was north you would have named it north but in this case C is south so you named it south E comes from LHA that we named before remember I said if LHA is between 0 to 180 it's west if it's more than 180 to 360 it's east and that's why this is east now south 33 east is also equal to 147 degrees true which is your true bearing why is that because if this is south and this is east and your south is 180 degrees this is 090 degrees when you say south 33 east means you are going 33 degrees to the east of south which is 140 7 degrees this is 33 so 180 minus 33 is 147 degrees write down your compass bearing given to you in the question is 150 degrees compass the difference between the two gives you the error which is 3 degrees 150 minus 147 is 3 degrees but when compass bearing is more than true bearing error becomes west i'll show you below through the diagram as well so compass best error west that's the rule of thumb compass is best that means if compass is more than true your error is west all right then you write down your variation given to you in the question as three degrees east compass error is a combination of variation and deviation if variation and deviation are opposite names you will kind of subtract them if they are same names you add them now you can see here that's why deviation is six degrees west because variation and deviation are different names you will subtract them and retain the name of the larger you get compass error 
Now other people have other rule of thumbs for it, but I like to understand this conceptually as I have shown in the diagram below. Your true bearing is 147, as you know. Your compass bearing was 150 degrees. Compass is 3 degrees west of the true. So that's why this becomes your compass error. Alright. Sorry about that bad handwriting. I should make it more clear. Alright, so that's compass error. And what is uh, variation? Variation is nothing but the angle between the true and the magnetic. You can see the magnetic is here. So magnetic will be somewhere around 144 in my because variation is this is 3 degrees east is variation. This is given to us in the question. Variation east means magnetic is on my east side of true. And that's why this is east. Hence, as a result, the deviation, which is the angle between the magnetic and the compass, you have to see where is the compass with respect to the magnetic. Compass is 6 degrees to the west of the magnetic. 6 degrees to the west of the magnetic, right? So this becomes your deviation. And that's why your deviation is 6 degrees west. So I like to understand this conceptually as well and then use my rule of thumbs and make sure they both match because sometimes you can make an error in a rush uh, especially when you are in the exam hall and you are trying to finish off a question. Right? So watch this video a couple of times, multiple times, as much times as you want. If you have any questions please ask me uh, through the comments that you put up on the YouTube video. Uh, many students often ask me that why do we have to solve this ambiguity of chronometer time because uh, for academic purposes that's how the questions are designed in most of the books. I know that on the ship you straight off get the GMT time from the GPS. But unfortunately these books have been written, you have been taught from these books. So I must teach you how to solve this ambiguity of chronometer time. I hope you find it very easy. It's nothing complicated. All the students do get confused. But I think it's pretty straightforward and easy. Alright and again, once again, thank you to all my subscribers. And all the people who watch these videos and follow me and send me comments and feedback and encourage me really appreciate it i'll see you soon with another video of mine if you have any questions queries or you want to go learn about some specific topic please let me know i'll be happy to make a video on that all right thanks guys